Yes, Starliner is in a competition with SpaceX and it is losing. It has already lost, essentially. So there was a half-truth given at the press conference today after the successful Starliner launch. And first off, congratulations to Boeing, to NASA, to ULA. It was a beautiful launch. Long time coming. We were all so excited to cheer on the Starliner launch today. The first crewed launch of Starliner on top of Atlas V. So beautiful. So perfect. I mean, I think there might be like some little teeny tiny little technical things that went wrong, but really it looked flawless. They still have to dock with the International Space Station, uh, be on the space station, I think for over a week and then uh, undock and come back down to Earth. But the initial step of this mission looked beautiful. And there was a press conference after the fact. And one of the questions posed by one of the journalists in the audience was, what is the competition like between SpaceX and Boeing? especially over the past decade. The reason this question was asked was because Boeing and SpaceX were awarded two contracts at the same time back a decade ago, September 2014, for launching uh, astronauts to the International Space Station for NASA and NASA partners. So let me just go over these numbers here. It was the Commercial Crew Transportation Capability Contract. Boeing got $4.2 billion. SpaceX got $2.6 billion. The idea at the time was that Boeing and SpaceX would be operational sending astronauts to ISS and back by 2017. Now, of course, neither one of them did that, but SpaceX did get there first. In 2020, they got their demo mission, demo two mission launched successfully, and they've been flying ever since to the International Space Station, as well as other Crew Dragon missions. Boeing today, finally, so excited for them. They finally got Starliner, which is also known as CST-100, by the way. They finally got that launched with people on board. They had a successful uncrewed mission in the past. Finally today, they are, um, you know, uh, quite a bit late, quite a bit delayed, but they finally did it. So the question posed by that journalist in the audience was, what's the competition like? And Mark Nappy, whose title is Vice President and Program Manager for Boeing Commercial Crew Program, he said, quote, we do not see it as a competition, end quote. And he's right and wrong there. That's, that's kind of a half truth there. Because in truth, they won the competition in that they won the contract, right? So back during that um, commercial crew transportation capability contract, there were three competitors and two of them won. So the third one was uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation for Dream Chaser. That's what Sierra Space was known back then. Sierra Space kind of spun off on its own thing a few years back. But Sierra Nevada Corporation had previously won a uh, an earlier version of this contract. And so they were a competitor here along with SpaceX and Boeing. And SpaceX and Boeing were the two competitors that won. So, you know, Boeing is correct in that it did win that contract along with SpaceX. So they don't see it as competition because they both won. They, they both are doing what they said they're going to do for NASA, finally. And so um, the broader question there is that, is Boeing Starliner competitive against SpaceX Dragon? And the answer there is no. <laughs> I think that um, if recent history is, you know, any indicator, no, uh, you know, SpaceX has already won. And so the um, future missions we have, um, let's see, I, I have the wrong screen open. So we have Starliner 1. So, okay, first off, first off, we have to get through this first demo mission, this, um, what are they calling this, CFT, commercial crew, no, crew CFT, Crew Flight Test. So that's the mission that's currently ongoing and it's not done yet, right? They still need to do all the mission success uh, milestones and get the crew back to Earth safely. So if that happens, and I have no doubt that that's gonna happen, I really don't. I mean, like I might eat my words and that would be horrible, but I really think that because all of these little boxes have been checked for you know every little detail that this mission is going to be a success. So if this mission is a success, is a success they are hoping for Starliner 1 in 2025. And they can do one to three missions. They have to do at least three missions for NASA, Starliner 1, 2, and 3, and they can do up to six, so up to Starliner 6. And those are the only missions contracted for Starliner. That's it. I did a video, a live stream about a month ago where I talked about Starliner as a commercial vehicle for non-government uh, you know, customers. And I'll link to that. Um, but basically, <laughs> There's, there's almost nothing. So back in 2021, when Orbital Reef, which is a commercial space station that is operated by Blue Origin and some other partners, when that was announced in 2021, I think October 2021, 
Boeing uh, Starliner was put out there as a crew transportation vehicle along with Dream Chaser. But ever since that announcement, it's been nothing, no details, no further announcements, absolutely nothing to indicate that Starliner is still in consideration, that there's any movement in terms of contracts or you know formal agreements. Starliner has not been mentioned in any other commercial context or any other government context for that matter for launching crew to any space station at all. And so when you look at the history of SpaceX Dragon, um, not only did they have Demo 2 back in May 2020, that was an amazing mission, by the way. I watched that live while on BBC, and so like, I was all emotional while on live TV. That was that was really fun. But aside from that, they had crew 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 for NASA. 8 is currently on the space station, so it's not done yet. But that is a total of nine missions for NASA, plus Axiom 1, 2, and 3, which are commercial missions for Axiom Space, plus you had Inspiration 4, plus you have the Polaris program, which Polaris Dawn, the first one, should be launching this summer. Um, and then they have additional Polaris missions that are going to be using Starlight, I'm sorry, I'm going to be losing, using Dragon. Um, so you can see the success of Dragon as a crewed vehicle way out surpasses what is at all even envisioned for Boeing Starliner. So in the context of getting astronauts to the International Space Station, they, they haven't done it yet, but they're in the process of doing it. So like that, that is not a competition. It's, they've already won that competition back in 2014. They won that. But in the context of being competitive as a vehicle that has an existence past ISS, probably not. I mean, there's another aspect here to look at, which is the money. So these were fixed uh, price contracts, firm fixed price contracts. And by the way, there is a uh, document by NASA that was released that actually called it a competition, an open competition. So even NASA is using that term competitor competition. Um, but back in 2014, they awarded two firm fixed price contracts, which is different from how NASA typically operates. It started with the cargo to the International Space Station, and then they kind of transitioned that mindset and that mentality to crew, where they are doing firm fixed price contracts, which means that there is a firm amount of money, a set amount of money awarded to each, each awardee, where Boeing got more, by the way. Boeing got uh, about a billion and a half more than SpaceX did. But because of all the delays and setbacks and mistakes on Boeing's side, they have lost an estimated one and a half billion dollars on Starliner. So, you know, there's two ways to look at this here. One is it's a win for, for NASA because NASA now gets these two dissimilar crewed vehicles for that redundancy and for just greater transportation ability, you know, greater, um, you know, opening up of uh, transportation to the International Space Station and other space stations in the future. Uh, so NASA wins there in that they have that capability and NASA also wins in that they didn't have to pay an extra $1.5 billion or whatever the real amount is to Boeing if this had been a cost plus contract. If this had been a cost plus contract and Boeing would have gotten $3 billion more than SpaceX, give or take, like who knows, legit, in an alternate universe, like if Boeing had had all these delays and mistakes and asked for more money from NASA because it's a cost plus contract, they could do it. And therefore Boeing essentially would have won. But that's not the reality we're in. The reality we're in is that Boeing lost a significant amount of money on Starliner. So I am not privy to Starliner uh, or um, Boeing leadership here. So I don't know if they're thinking we're going to fulfill our contract to NASA and then that's it because there were grumblings about a year or two ago that Boeing was just going to like call it quits after it completed its obligation to NASA. But then there were other statements by Boeing leadership said, no, we're going to stick it out. So there's two ways to look at it. Either Boeing's going to just do their ISS transportation for NASA and then that's it and call it quits with Starliner. Or since they have this capability with Starliner, they are going to try to market it to we can't really know if it's going to be cost competitive, who they're going to market it to. Are they going to market it to other government agencies? Are they going to market to, um, you know, you know uh, who, who knows? Because we don't know what the actual cost of a Starliner mission is outside of this contract that they were awarded. This uh, $4.2 billion for these missions for NASA. So I would be shocked if Starliner was competitive against uh, SpaceX in terms of money. 
we already know it's not competitive in terms of history, not yet at least. I, I don't see that happening. So in the bigger picture, <laughs> Starliner is just not competitive against SpaceX. Um, I do hope that there is a future. I don't want Boeing to just scrap it. I think it's fantastic that Starliner exists and I want there to still be a room, you know, room for Starliner, uh, you know, some kind of niche that they can carve out. Uh, but <laughs> when that journalist asked, how do you see the competition with SpaceX? You know, <laughs> and the guy said, like, we, we, we don't see it as a competition. I just, I laughed. <laughs> Because, like, it's obviously a competition. There are, um, you know, direct competitors here where they're, are, they're going after customers, right? They're going after government customers. They're going after other commercial customers. They're going after, uh, after other government agencies around the world, uh, you know? So when you're thinking about how competitive can SpaceX be, um, you know, compared to any other competitor, compared to any, you know, put aside Boeing Starliner, you know, when you're looking at Sierra Vanna Dream Chaser or, um, you know, anybody else. I, they're so far ahead. SpaceX is so far ahead of the competition. It's really hard to see anybody catching up. It really is. You know, I can't predict decades out, but in the near term, SpaceX is going to win out. <laughs> and I hope there's room. I, I do think there's room for uh, Dream Chaser for a different reason. That's a different video because it's such a different vehicle uh, that it can do things that only Shuttle could have done back in the day. Um, but a capsule vehicle, I mean, like Orion's not competitive. Orion's not trying to be competitive. Orion is a government vehicle, you know, built by a, a, a prime contractor, but it's a government vehicle and it's not intended to be competitive. Starliner is a commercial vehicle. It's intended to be competitive, but it's not. And so I want it to exist. I want them to find room for it outside of ISS because ISS has a finite lifetime of about 2030-ish. But I don't know. I don't know. You tell me what you think. So you comment below and you think if there is a, you know, a way for Starliner to be competitive against SpaceX or any other co competitor in the crew transportation arena. Congratulations again to Boeing, ULA, and NASA for this amazing watch today. Um, and cross some fingers for Starship tomorrow. Let's make it happen.